So yeah. let's start with the uh, the selection part because I think that's a very important way to merchandise, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so when I think about selection, um, I think there's a couple things. One, I, I really appreciate how you said, hey, Amazon wants you to be successful because you're absolutely right. Amazon wants you to generate revenue. They want you to spend money on marketing. They want your business to grow. And to your point, there's certain ways that that has to grow because, you know, like if you pack your thing full of, let's say you pack a shipment full of peanuts, they're going to charge you per peanut, right? Because if everybody does that, they literally have mountains of peanuts. So they, there's certain things they have to put in place because of the volume in which it's happening. So with that in mind, you know, when we think about selection, and because I work with so many different types of companies, I get to see a lot of different selection theories and ideas. And I think one of the biggest divergences you can see in apparel, where there is a huge, uh, I like to call them ASINs, but you know people call them SKUs, uh, you know, explosion. You know, if you have three colors in four sizes and two different designs, you can quickly ramp up to like 20, 25 items, unique ASINs, right? Um, each one its own color, each one its own size, each one its own design. That is a problem. Uh, and that's a problem because it is very tough to keep in stock on such a wide assortment of selection. Um, and so, you know, how do you, you know, how do you balance this, this with also then, you know, the need that Amazon has, because Amazon would like to sell one item a million times as opposed to a million items one time. And then that's what Amazon wants, but Amazon, as we said, also wants to provide the largest selection. So they're kind of, you know, like hiding some of this risk in what you assort in your selection to sellers saying, hey, put everything up. We want you to offer everything. That's what Amazon wants because they want a consumer to stay in their, in their system. But as the owner of that inventory, that's not what you want because you don't want dollars just sitting in the in the warehouse that you're actually having to pay for because they're charging you long-term and short-term storage fees. Um, so there's a natural kind of tension there. Amazon wants a lot of selection. They don't want any dollars in inventory. They want your dollars in inventory and they want you to provide a large selection. So what we really look at is there's kind of two ways we look at it. First is quite literally the 80-20 rule is to be applied here. 20% of your selection is going to drive 80% of your sales and really two to three of your items out of, I don't even care how big your selection is, two to three of your items are really going to drive almost all of your sales, you know, at least almost half your sales. So one, get in stock on those items, make sure you're in stock on those items and pay attention to the signal. So if you have a small, let's say you have a growing catalog and you have a, a growing business, well, pay attention to the signals, whatever items are starting to move really feed those. And the ones that aren't moving, even if you think it's the best flavor or the nicest cut or the highest quality, if the consumers aren't resonating with it, you got you have to let it go. And that's a trade-off right there. That's one of these fights. And, you know, we as, as entrepreneurs, we have very clear visions on what we want, but sometimes our consumers, our clients, our customers show us something else. So you need to accept that. You need to accept what you're being shown, accept what's moving quickly, push more of that. And whatever is dying, you know, put it on, you know, let it kind of be in hospice care. Maybe you can keep a little bit of inventory in, you know, make sure that you are running some ads to it just in case there is some interest there. But don't think it's going to be that you're going to have five equal items that are all driving equal amounts of revenue and they're all ascending that way. No, it's going to be two or three items that really drive it. 